Avant-garde jazz is a genre of music that pushes jazz beyond traditional forms. These musicians embrace collective improvisation, radical harmonic concepts, and even atonality. Ornette Coleman and John Coltrane were among the prime movers in this 1960s musical rebellion. On Sunday Night Live, Bobby Cap, a drummer in this movement, remembers the music and the scene that surrounded it. No, there was no avant-garde as we were playing it when we got to the city. Uh, I studied drums on the Alan Dawson, and uh, we had workshops. We had Keith Jarrett in one of them. Uh, mostly we're learning to play mainstream jazz and mainstream charts and the fundamentals of, of uh, improvisation. But when we went to New York, uh, I didn't then, Gene and I went our separate ways and I fell in with the avant-gardists and, and that's what I became and what I did. Bobby, uh, w when you were on Third Street, was that a loft or just an apartment with a performance place? Before we went there, we were at a place called 52 Bond Street on the Bowery, right down the street from Ribby's, from Sam, Sam Rivers thing. And, uh, Dave lived upstairs, and I lived downstairs with Byron Lancaster and myself. And Archie Shep lived about two blocks away on Cooper Square. And so Beaver Harris and those people, so they were all over there. And we had a little scene going there. And then we were there for a while before we wound up on Third Street. Who lived on Third Street besides you? Uh, Dave Burrell, by Lancaster, the Sun Ra Orchestra, um, Noel Howard, the bassist Norris Jones, uh, the saxophonist, lived on First Avenue, but it was right around the corner, um, Farrell Sanders, and right underneath him was the Jimmy Lovelace, the drummer. And uh, anyway, it was a whole scene down there. You know, I was a listener at the time, and uh, I read Downbeat Magazine and the, the press, and there was this split between the mainstream players and the avant-garde players, kind of like 20 years before when there was a split between the beboppers and the, well, they called them moldy figs at one point, but the guys who were from a previous era. Was there a split in the community or did everyone embrace the fact that we're all musicians, we're all being creative? I think in the New York scene, they want you to specialize in what you are representing. I think the mainstream guys were kind of on one side and the avant-garde players were on the other. And then some people crossed the line, like Sam Rivers could play anything. There's people who, who mixed, but it was also kind of also separate. Now, let's talk about this concert. Uh, which took place at the Village Theater, which later became the Fillmore East. That year in 66, there were a number of concerts there. Lenny Bruce played there one night, in fact, on a double bill with Mongo Santa Maria. Dr. Timothy Leary, who was in the news back then, who was the, the prophet of LSD, he did a performance at the Village Theater. And then there were these uh, concerts uh, that uh, presented the avant-garde. Uh, Bobby, you worked with Giuseppe Logan during the uh, Friday, July 29th concert with Ornette Coleman. What do you remember about that night? Well, what Giuseppe wanted, what he was looking for was sounds like a painter painting on an abstract canvas. Uh, he wasn't looking for time from the drummer. So, that was my specialty. And uh, the concert was cool was I got a lot of solo space and I could play my little melodies on the drums. In those days, the keeping of beat drummers that were around were like Art Blakey, <laughs> Elvin Jones, Philly Joe Jones, Max Roach, Roy Haynes, you know, and so, 
I always thought better be the mediocre original than an excellent copy. <laughs> so, or even maybe it could be a first class original. I don't know. But anyway, what I was doing was different. And that's what he wanted. And uh, so we did the concert and uh, got good reviews. And I didn't realize it at the time, but it was a historic concert and uh, a landmark concert. So you could do one landmark thing and last you for a lifetime. It's a different feeling when you do something that historical, you know, I don't care what it is. You could be playing marbles or something, you know, it could be an historic game. And uh, so out of all the countless things that were going on then, this is 2023 and people still have that poster in their collection. 